sense to you guys. So yeah, so welcome to coaching. We're going to talk today about how to do comparative market analysis. And I think I want to start with, we get wrapped up around, I need to do a CMA, right? And when we're doing a CMA, it's usually a very high level, high detailed, I got all the specifics when I'm really getting down to getting ready to price a house. But sometimes when we're going out in that preliminary conversation with a seller, or we're helping a buyer determine what price they should offer on a home, you don't have to go to this super high level deep dive. Does that make sense to you guys? Right? So I wanna make sure we're, we're using the same languages because I do get a phone call a lot about, hey, I'm going out on a listing appointment and I need a CMA. And I'll say, great, what can you tell me about the house? Nothing. Then you really can't do a full blown accurate CMA because you don't know what the house is like. <clears throat> now, when I'm talking to prospective sellers, I will ask questions before I go out and meet them. And one of my pre-call conversations with a prospective seller is, tell me about your house. Tell me what you've done to the home since you purchased it, right? So if we were gonna do my house, I bought it two years ago. If you asked me that question, I would say absolutely nothing. So you could go look at the listing pictures and get pretty accurate, right? But what if I bought the house in 2000? Probably not. So I just want to make sure we don't get so anxious, I think is the word, and create so much anxiety about the CMA in the early stages of any process. Is that fair? All right. So I am going to tell you this about a CMA. It is an art, not a science. Okay. So Lala, when you're doing your paintings as an artist, does it, are there certain things that if I don't do this, then um, it, it's going to be horrible and it's going to fail? Um, no. No. Right. It's, it's your creativity. Yeah. It's, it's your interpretation of whatever you're painting and creating, right? I would argue a CMA is like that, right? There's no one way and there's no perfect way because none of us can predict to the dollar or the penny what the market is going to tell us a house is worth. So just like an appraisal, a CMA is an opinion and it's an opinion based on data. And I will tell you in 2022, the data meant nothing, right? Especially the first part of the year, because things were moving so fast, you never knew what someone was going to do. <clears throat> so I really took the approach of saying, well, let's look at it like an appraiser, because let's figure out what we think it'll appraise for, and then we'll go from there, okay? The other thing is you can take this class from a multitude of people. You can take it from me. You can take it from TJ. You can take it from Bob. You can go to DMAR and take it. You can go to RE Colorado and take it. Although I think theirs is more technically how to use their tools. And everyone's going to have a different opinion. But here's what's fascinating. We all come up with about the same answer, right? So if we were all going to go paint a picture of a son, okay? Do we think that our son, our son would all look identical? No. Now a sun is easy. I'm not an artist, so I could even do that, right? I can draw a circle and then I can put the, the little lines out and that would make a sun, right? Lala would get very creative and it would have clouds and it would be gorgeous and it would be the most beautiful sun you've ever seen, right? Maybe a sunrise or a sunset she'd throw in there. And yet, did we both paint a picture of a sun? <clears throat> Following me? I love it when I have an artist on the line. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you that I primarily use a lot of what TJ teaches. So if how many of you have taken a CMA class from someone other than me? Nobody. How many of you have taken a CMA class? I have. Okay. I'm Colorado, but I would like to take another one. 
Okay, this is crazy because this is I have eight people on here and I'm only seeing four. I have definitely screwed up something with my views. So who's all here? Well, it says Taylor Vonderhaar's here. Alexia is here. Patty Ford is here. I don't know why I can't see any of you. Oh, there we go. All right. You guys are going to have to be really engaging with me because I'm not seeing all of you. So I literally thought I had three people in the room. So welcome, everybody. Okay, somebody's giving me an echo. You probably have your... I'm only running off of one machine, so it's not me. Oh, I'm talking about your views. So you probably can't see me because I'm currently camera off getting ready for my open house. Oh, that's not it. I don't know. I put in my view as gallery should show all of you. And it doesn't. It shows me five of the eight of us. Hmm. So anyway. All right. Well, that's okay. Maybe it is the camera view. If Mike Striplin turned his camera on, would I suddenly see him? There's Taylor. There's Mike. All right, we got everybody. That's what it is. Somehow I've set it up so that if I don't, you don't have your cameras on, I don't know you're here. All right, so we're going to share my screen. Taylor, are there recordings out there on how to do a CMA? Yes, except I only watch one. Okay, where do you find it? Uh, I have the link downloaded from when you did your last one and I must have grabbed it from either your email or the YouTube. And then I put it in a document that I have for CMA. So that's where I find mine, but awesome. Okay. So if you go out to the coaching resource page, there's links to the YouTube channel and you will find past classes. This class I'm going to have Stacy upload to as long as it becomes a good one. We'll see. We'll see if Stacy's going to put this one up, but that's my intention. So let me move some stuff around so I can actually make this work. Um, let's go this way. All right. So where do I start? Well, I start with Ari Colorado. Okay. And when I go to Ari Colorado, I'm going to do a search. Now, does anyone have a property address that they would like to do a CMA on, or should I just use one that I have in my back pocket? I have one. Okay. Love so it. let's hold on. So when I have a specific address, the other place I go to is Realist because I want the details on the house. So fire away the address, Taylor. Uh, it's a condo. Okay. 1100. 1100 Cherokee. Yes. Okay. 304. The one we saw yesterday. All right. There we go. So here it is. So we have a 1665 square foot condo. Um, it's two beds, two bath built in 1998. And if I just look down here, I will scroll down and this is where I get my stats, right? I've got above ground, total finished floor. If I was doing a house house, it would have basement information. If there was one it tells me how many rooms there are. It tells me if I've got central air, it tells me my garage capacity. Now I'm going to guess this is probably underground parking. It's 301. I apologize. It does you don't have to change it, but well, we can look at this one. <clears throat> it's just very funny that 304 was an active listing. I should have stayed with it. There we go. All right. So this one's currently on the market. Also, it appears um, 1,670 square feet. Um, this one, I scroll down here. So this one has a single garage space. 
So I'm going to ask the question again, is this condo is an actual garage or is it one that they park underneath? I believe it's underneath. Okay. Awesome. So condos are the easiest thing to comp because there's usually many of them that all look and feel the same. Um, as far as, you know, it's really easy to find them. So this is a great example for us to use on this particular one. So if I go to matrix, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do a search. I'm going to go to residential. And I use this box right here, the X number of miles within. So I type the address here. Was it north or south or was it just Cherokee? I think it was just Cherokee. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And eventually it'll come up and it'll give you the hyperlink. And that's what you want to click on is this hyperlink. Okay. And what I'm looking for here is I start with actives, coming soon, pendings, and closed. But the other thing is, is that since I know this is a condo, agents, for whatever reason, have a hard time properly always identifying condos, townhomes, multifamily. So what I'm going to do over here on the property type is I'm going to check single family and say not. So as long as it's not a single family residence, I wanna see it. Now, if I was doing a single family residence, then I would check the single family residence and leave it as is, okay? So I wanna look at the actives, I wanna look at the coming soons, I wanna look at the pendings, and I wanna look at the closed. Now this particular area has a high amount of activity, so I'm probably only gonna go back 90 days to start. When I'm doing a CMA, you can go out, appraisers will can go out up to a mile from the property and you they'll go back six months. Sometimes they'll go back longer, depending on where the property is. Sometimes you have to go out farther. Like if I'm up in the mountains, I'm probably going three, five miles, okay? I always start closest to the property and work my way out if I don't find enough comps because that's gonna be, the closest neighborhood to what I'm in, and especially with condos. This is close to downtown. I'm probably gonna find them all huddled right here together. Pretty close, okay? So the one we're looking at is right here. There's some here on the other side of I-20 or Spear. Let's take a look and see how many of these are comparable, okay? So I'm gonna start with the size of the unit. So. I always sort first above ground, okay? And this one was how many square feet? 1670, right? So how many properties can I find that are close to that 1670? Well, here's the subject, right? Here's another active at 1690, 1720, 1600. Those alone are all pretty close, right? The downside to that is I didn't get any closed. The oh, appraisers. Yes. Sorry. I don't know. For some reason, mine, the match came back zero. You're not what? It. My match coming came back zero. I just wanted to see what I did wrong. I don't know. So did you, um, so, uh, did you um, select a single family residence? I said not. So I checked single family and said not. Okay. Okay. All right. So the appraisers will tell you for square footage, they like to stay within 25% above and below the square footage as their, their maximum delta. Okay. So if I take 1670, that means I can take about, I'm just going to do dirty math right? 10% would be 200 square feet. So I could go down and I could grab this one for 1400. I'm not going to grab this one at 1385 because it says it's a one bedroom, although I am because it's in the same building. Okay. So I'm going to grab these. That's going to give me a little more data to look at. All right. And then I'm also going to go and I'm going to grab this one for 1843. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow it and I'm going to discover that I still don't have any closed. 
I would say that Bargain City in downtown Denver on condos, guys, look at this amount of, look how there's been zero sold in the last 90 days that have closed. And we have how many actives? You got a buyer's market down there. Okay. And Lala, I'm going to mute you because I think the echo's coming. If you're running off of two devices, that's what's doing it. There we go. Thank you. Um, so because I didn't get any solds, I'm actually going to go back and hit that 180 days. And then I'm going to see if I get anything better. All right. So I'm still sorting by my above ground. I'm going to flip it the other way so I get the big ones up here. So let's see if we can find anything more. Are you guys seeing how this is like just a big old puzzle? I'm still not getting any. Interesting. <clears throat> hmm. Well, let's do this. Let's go back to the beginning of last year. Because how has the market been over the, since over the last year? Has it been changing a lot? Or would you say it's been pretty flat? Changing a lot. Like not as far as, it's just different than it has been. It's different than it has been. So let me ask the question differently. How has pricing been since the beginning of 2023? Relatively flat. Mm -hmm. I would say it's been relatively flat, right? So because I know my market, I can say I'm comfortable going back a little bit farther in time if it helps me get some data to understand where to price the property at. Does that make sense? So this is good in the fact that it's not an ideal timeline where I have a bunch to choose from today. All right. So that looks like enough. So I'm going to narrow these. And so now I've got a bunch of actives. I've got some pendings and now I have some closes. Okay. Now, if I was doing a market analysis to take out for a quick preview, well, the other thing I would do, hold on. If I was just, I knew nothing about the house other than the address. Are y'all with me? I would take this actions. I would highlight them all and I would do what's called a quick CMA. And what this quick CMA gives me is it gives me a spreadsheet that shows me, here's a summary of the actives, here's the summary of the pendings, and here's the summary of the closes. Okay. Now these could, these are going to range in prices, right? Your, your median price is, I got to hide you all so I can see it, right? Your original price average is 663, list price 646, close 617. But that's going to be all the different conditions, true? Because we've had as low as 499 and as high as 759. But if I don't know anything about the property I'm going to go view, this is a great tool to take with me and then once I'm in it, I can kind of, I'm, I've done, I will have done enough homework and I'm going to show you how to do that where I can probably get closer when I'm with the client. Does that make sense? Like if I know this one that sold for $4.99, you know, the kitchen cupboards were ripped apart, you know, the flooring was ripped up, like there were holes in the wall. I'm probably going to know that that's not the property I'm in. On the same token, this one that sold for $7.50, or the 656 was probably totally tricked out, right? So if I walk into a totally tricked out property, I'm probably gonna lean what? Towards the higher side of the range, right? If it's a dump, I'm gonna go to the lower thing. When you're out with a potential client, here is my favorite script to use. You go through your listing consultation. You talk about the market and you could use this quick CMA to say, okay, here's what we're seeing. Let me sharpen my pencil or let me go back to my office and sharpen my pencil now that I've seen your property and I'll get you a better range on where I think we are. 
Okay. Patty, if you were selling your home and the realtor had never been in your house before, didn't ask you very many qualifying questions, walked in with a quick CMA and said, yep, I think your house is worth this much money. How much trust are you going to have in them? Not much. Not much unless you know they know your neighborhood like the back of their hand, right? Right. However, if they said that that script to you, now that I've seen your property, let me go back to my office, crunch some numbers, sharpen my pencil, and let me get back to you with a better range of where I think we are. What's your confidence level with that broker? Very high. Very high. It is okay to not have all the answers the first time you meet with a client. Okay. Questions where we've gone so far? None. Okay. All right. So the next thing I like to do is I like to go through the properties and take a look at the condition that they're in. So let's look at the subject property, 301. And get you moved. All right. So the building's all going to look the same. Okay, so looks very nice, right? Nice with hard surface flooring. It's virtually staged. Okay. All right, nice little features. Okay, looks like the kitchen, while it looks nice, it may have had some updates because this was built when? In 1998, so maybe it hasn't. Um, but I mean, it's got a tile countertop. Right, so that's not necessarily current, true. So it could use some, it could use some updating. Everybody agree with that? But absolutely pretty, right? Like you could move into it today and be totally comfortable. It just doesn't look like a house that looks like in 2021, 2024, whatever year we're in, right? Dated, but nice, all right? If I go look at the other ones that we're competing against, so that one's listed for 590, okay? This one at 1690, almost the exact same size, yeah? This competition house at 204, now this is in a different condominium unit, but it's still within a quarter of a mile. So it's a different building. You can probably assume, unless there's a big difference, that it's similar in as far as location. So hard surface floors, paint colors are nice. <clears throat> Definitely a more updated kitchen, right? So if these two properties are competing against each other and they were priced the same, which one would probably be the higher value for the property? This current one. The second yeah, one, the yeah. six sixty five, right? So when I look at that, right, one's priced at six sixty five, one's priced at five ninety. That actually probably sounds somewhat appropriate, right? They're about the same size, right? Now I'm never going to use an active to necessarily price a property in a CMA, but it's going to be a data point. I think most of you have seen the video that I show when when Jeff does the listing consultation with a seller and goes through, here's the competition, here's what's recently closed or what's recently gone under contract and here's what's recently closed, right? All of those are data points that you use. Then I'm gonna come down here to these pendings, right? I'm very interested in this one at 640, right? And honestly, I'm interested in this one at 1720, right? Because it's in the same complex, I'll bet on Cherokee Street. And it's it was went under contract when it was listed at 694. Now, it went under contract February 19th. If I'm getting ready to list a property, I would call this listing agent and see what kind of information I could get, okay? What was the activity, all of that stuff. So let's just kind of flip through it. Where's my little arrow? There it is. Okay, same tall building. Oh, very pretty. So is this one in a better condition, similar condition or worse condition than our subject? Definitely better. Definitely better, right? That kitchen is amazing. Those right? bathrooms are amazing. Exactly, right? And 
They listed it at 700 and look how long they sat on the market. If I was going to do a CMA and I couldn't get a hold of the listing agent, I'm going to assume they probably didn't even get the 694 because when I look at the history, they did a price decrease on February. Well, I'm going to guess they might have. They did a price decrease on February 1st to 694 and they went right back under contract within a couple of weeks. So they got close to that number, right? Would that be a safe assumption for those of you that have been doing this for a little bit? Probably, okay. Boy, are we artists today. Taylor gave me a hard one. <clears throat> um, this one, 1,600 square feet, similar in size. It only gives me one picture. So it's gonna be really hard to know anything about this. Went under contract, same day. And they are only putting it in for comp. So we have nothing to work with. I would not even use this one because I don't know what the condition is. They didn't give me any verbiage. They gave me nothing. So I wouldn't use this one because I don't have enough data. Now, when I go down and look at these solds, let's see, I'm this one. Um, I want to look at this 1632. Okay. Now this one, they originally listed it at 719. Dropped the price, eventually closed at 687 in January of 2023. So I'm going to have to apply a little bit of knowledge as I'm thinking my way through this, but it's a data point. Okay. So I'm going to flip through it. Definitely a different place. Um, very modern. Not Margaret style, but very modern. Very up to date. So similar, nicer, or worse than? Different. Different, but I would argue the finishes are more up to date. That's what I was going to say. Right? So you've definitely got stone. You've got these high-end. Yeah, the style is different, but if I look at the condition, this one is closer to a brand new one than ours is. Right. Right? So I would say this one is, is in better condition. Then the next one at 613, it closed in May. And of course, they're all different buildings. Hard surface floors. Super modern. There's my kitchen. That's an interesting machine. Huh. Not my style. That's very modern, very sleek, okay? Nicer, same, or worse? Well, more up to date. Yeah, yeah I'd, say, I'd say, again, if you're looking at the finishes, it's obviously been complete. It's either brand new or even completely redone. Right, right. And so, and then we've got this one. We'll grab this one too. Um, Or something that I thought was going to be easy. This is getting to proving to be a little more difficult than I thought. So you got stone again, not my style, but I'm not looking at style and taste. I'm looking at it. We got stone. This has been updated as well. Um, so again, a lot of these are in a lot better up-to-date condition. Now I would say this one is not as updated as the other ones we looked at because you've got, you've now you've got some of the old tile that's still in some of the other rooms. Make sense? Okay, who have I lost and who have I still got with me? Crooks are here. I'm following them. Just because you're here doesn't mean you're with me. All right, so these would be the ones that I would probably use if I was comping this out. Now, We've got uh, some ranges here, right? We've got currently on the market for 590. And then we have properties going anywhere from 613 and gone under contract for just south of 700,000. So if Taylor was asking me to do this because she has a buyer who wants to buy this property, this is the data I would give them to determine what their offer price is. Okay. 
I'm going to talk about just a few other things that I will do. So one of the biggest, there's several adjustments that you make because none of these are identical, right? Not a single one of these is the exact same unit in the exact same condition. True? <clears throat> so then you have to make what we call adjustments. Okay. And we'll spend some time working on adjustments. Um, but one of the biggest adjustments I make when I'm doing it on the fly with my buyers <clears throat> is condition, right? Because these are all about the same size. Is a is a, a square footage adjustment of a couple hundred dollars going to massively change my number? Say no. Okay. But condition will. So I want to talk about condition adjustments. So when you're working with an appraiser, they use these codes that are C1 through C5. So a C1 is going to be a brand new property. A C2 is going to be an older property, but has been updated to like new, a flip, okay? I would state that all of those ones that you all said was nicer than the one you were looking at, your subject property, were all C2s. The one that had still had some tile, I would say that's, and Taylor knows I do this, to me that one was a C3 plus or a C2 minus, right? It's halfway in between. It's not been completely updated, but it's been updated more. A C3 has some updates, but it's not been fully updated. Right now that can mean if you're out and you're comping houses that were built in 1960, you don't have the original cabinets, but maybe you have the cabinets from the nineties. Does that make sense? Okay, a C4 is, it's a great house. You could live in it. Grandma lived here, right? It's super dated, but it's functional. And then a C5 is it's a scrape. So when I'm making adjustments for condition, the rule of thumb is it's three to 5% per the condition level. And you guys are gonna all get a copy of this document that I have in front of me, okay? So if just as a general statement, if I look at the properties we just looked at, we I think we can all agree all the comps we picked were C2s, is that true? Yes. Right. And ours is probably a C3. It looks like the tile that we all put in our houses in the late 90s. My name is Margaret. I did the same thing. Okay. Um, what's funny is the lady who bought the house from me in 2000 still has the kitchen I put in in 1998. Um, so if I go back to this and I'm working with my client, all of these are in the six, six mid sixes, right? So let's just say if we did all the adjustments, these are around 650 because it's just easy, dirty math, right? If I adjust only for condition at 5%, how much am I taking off these prices? I think about 35,000. 30 to 35,000, yeah, right? So, if I take that that one that sold for 656 and the only difference was the condition and I take off 30,000, now I'm around six and a quarter, right? This is how I guide my buyers, right? Now, the other thing that's really big here that I see that all of the other ones have that ours doesn't is in parking, right? This one has a single space where everything else says it has two. And I'm going to assume that to be true. If I go back to my adjustment page, not that one, parking is usually around 10,000 a space. Now, I would argue if I'm in downtown Denver, what do you think they're worth? More. More. I'm probably going to double it. Right. 
So now if I go back here to my numbers and we said, call it 650-ish, we took, we took money off for conditions. So now we were down to six and a quarter and I take off just 20 grand for the difference in the parking space. Now where am I? 600, right? So if I'm guiding a buyer, I'm not going to all these little minutia details. Are you following me? Okay, this is the number one thing I see all of you want to do. And sometimes we don't have time to do every little detail. I'm gonna teach you how to do every little detail because we've got an hour and a half to go yet, okay? Now, this one's priced at 590. You could say, well, Mark, why is it still on there if it's probably close to 600? Well, what did we discover the market is like in downtown Denver as it relates to condos? It's oversaturated. It's oversaturated. It's a buyer's market which means the price has probably come down since these closeds have hit, right? And we could probably do the homework and look at them and say, okay, this one started at 750, sat on the market for 60 days and they closed at 656. Also, our subject property started at 615. I don't know if we saw that. Yeah, we did, <clears throat> right? If I look at this other closed one, it started at 719 and closed at 687 and sat for 133 days. So it's very clear that even though the sold comps say we should be at 600-ish, right? The market's saying we all don't want to buy downtown. Thank you, COVID, right? Plus all the other stuff, right? So this one just had a price reduction yesterday to 590. My gut says it's probably in the ballpark now. And if I was guiding my buyer, that's exactly what the consultation would look like. It would be like the comps of solds are running from X to Y. These are where the pendings are. This is what we're seeing. Based on all of this data, I think they finally have it priced in the ballpark. Now, how much am I going to offer? That falls into the other conversation. Hey, listing agent. How's the activity? Am I competing against anybody? How's your showing activity? Because if I'm not competing against anybody else, I might say to my buyer, maybe we kick the tires at 580 instead of 590. If I find out all of a sudden they're at 590 and all of a sudden I'm competing against two other offers, I might guide them differently because could you all feel comfortable if somebody offered this house at 600? On the comps? No. Okay, so Elena says no. Corey Crooks was right, right, shaking his head no real fast. Amy, what do you think? I think it would depend on how my clients felt about the house. Okay. Do you think, let me ask the question differently. Do you guys all think that appraiser could get to 600,000 on this property? Yes. Yes. There you go. So if your client was in love with it, Amy, and wanted to offer 600, would you feel safe, good about it? Yes. If they said, I'd like to offer 585, would you feel good about it? 585, yeah. Okay. All right. 95.9. What, Corey? 595.9. <laughs> My husband doesn't work in round numbers. Uh, He's an engineer. He should. <laughs> Not when it comes to real estate, yeah. for whatever reason. <laughs> I, I know that Corey doesn't like all my fluffy bunnies either. Like, well, just do a ballpark number here and do an <laughs> estimation here. And it's going to get uh, you in the ballpark, right? I'm actually good Here's with it. No. I, now it's my wife going, that's not. Yeah, I'm always Now like, ah, we're going to do. All right. Yeah, exactly. That's close enough, right? All I'm saying is when you're working with buyers, you all don't have time to do what I'm about to teach you how to do. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to actually do a true CMA. We've been out to see the property. This is a potential listing. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So, oh wait, first I need to do this. I need to get my picture taken 
So I have everybody's names to show that you were all here. Hold on one second. Andy yells at me when I don't turn in attendance. All right, we're done with that. Okay, so <clears throat> I am going to share with you a spreadsheet that I built probably my first six months in the business because one, it makes it easy. I've built it so it's very automated. So it does a lot of the calculations for you, but you still have to, you can't just put in some data and it spits out the number. It's not that smart. It is not the only way this was built the way I think you can build your own spreadsheets. Okay. You can build however you want to get to where we're going. Does that sound fair? Okay. So, um, so this is going to be tricky because I'm going to have to remember all these numbers now. Okay. So my subject property, and we're not going to do all of these. Trust me. I don't have time. So I take my spreadsheet and I'm going to put my subject address in here. And then I'm just going to put in information, right? So the square footage on it is 1670. And the total square footage is 1670. We don't have a basement. I have two bedrooms. I have two baths. I have central air, right? Yeah, there's central air. Awesome. Y'all had to help me. Otherwise, it's going to take us forever. Um, it was built in 1998. It has one parking space. It doesn't have a lot. I don't care about the fireplace. And its condition is, what did we say, C3? Yes. Okay. All right. So my first, oops, I put that on the wrong field. Okay, so my second comp, <clears throat> I'm just going to go grab the clothes. Is that good enough for you guys? Yep. All right, so 930 Acoma Street. Yeah. So it's 1,583 square feet. Doesn't have a basement. Two beds, two baths. Um, it has two car garage. It was built in 96 and it also has central air. So Margaret, the HOA fees, wouldn't that come into play in this as well? I have never used HOA fees for determining value. Okay. It might be part of the discussions as to making an offer versus affordability, but not necessarily on value of the home. Okay, so this is the one that's super tricked out, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so would you guys say that's a C2? Yes. C2, all right. And then we'll do one other one. Because you just need to get the gist of it. Uh. <clears throat> oh, the other thing I want to put in here is the date it sold for. I need the data. Go back. All right. So it sold for 613.5. And it sold May of 2023 and started at 615. Okay, um, and then the next one, this one sold nine of 2023 for 656,800. And the original price was 750. 
oops. And then its square footage is 1546. Whereas Taylor gave me one that I don't have to teach you about basements, which I'm going to talk about. So 1996 Central. Two car garage. And that one's a C2 also, right? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this one is in the same building or close to it, right? Is this the same building? No, just on the same street, right? Right. Yeah. And none of those are very big down there, are they? All right, and this one closed 123.23. So again, these are not my idea of the perfect comps. I'm just going to tell you that because we're dealing with so much older stuff. But part of it is the property that we're dealing with, which you never get the perfect property, right? For those of you that have been doing CMAs, is there ever just one that's a slam dunk and you don't have to apply some just market knowledge? They know. Even if we did my townhouse out here in Candela that I bought two years ago, because of the lack of sales we've had, we'd have to do some of this. Central 98. Okay. <clears throat> This is the one that had some tile still in it? No. Okay. All right. So these are the comps we want to use that we want to adjust, right? But we know we need to make adjustments because they're not the same size. There's different conditions and there's garages, true? Okay. So the first adjustment we're going to go after is our square footage. Okay. So you make your square footage adjustment off of the median price for total square foot in the area and divide that by three. And that gives you what's called your adjustment ratio. So if your median price per square foot was 235, you divide that by three at $78. That's your above ground square footage. For your unfinished below ground, if we had a basement, you would use 25% of that adjustment ratio. So 25% of the 78. If it's finished below ground, the difference is a half of a half of the adjustment ratio. And then I also gave you some adjustments if we had a carriage house, an ADU above the garage, or a walkout basement. Okay. So to find the median price per square foot. I go back to my single line display. And if you see that little crossbar I have right there, if I click on that, it brings up this tool that I can say I can insert a column. And the column I want to insert is price per square foot total, yes? Okay, so I'm going to apply that. And then I just assort it, okay? And I have how many? Seven, so one, two, three, four. 400 a square foot would be the median, yes? Median is in the middle, not the average. So I'm going to go to Margaret's spreadsheet and I'm going to enter the median price per square foot here at 400. And now the system is going to automatically calculate the above ground square foot adjustment ratio, the finished basement spa space, and the unfinished basement space. Year built adjustments. This hasn't changed in 10 years. We usually figure about $1,000 a year. Depending on the neighborhood, you maybe could go to $1,500. <clears throat> and then lot size, if we had a lot, anywhere from 3 to $5 a square foot. Because we have a condo, we don't have those adjustments to make. Questions? Okay. There are some people 
who teach appraisals or CMAs that take everything to the finite degree, meaning make an adjustment for square footage. Um, quartz is worth this much. Granite is worth this much. Um, hardwood versus laminate versus carpet. Like they go down to a very low detail. <laughs> and they also want to do an adjustment for bedrooms and bathrooms. And I'm not going to tell you they're wrong. But what I've learned is even if you go to that high level of detail, the pluses and minuses are going to get you about where I'm getting you here today. So if I were to quote TJ, who is both, does everybody know who TJ is? TJ Carbajal is an agent in our office. He works on the Carol Kessler team and he's a licensed appraiser. So he is a great resource. If you guys are in the middle of trying to price a very unique property, call TJ, he'll talk to you, right? If you are a buyer and an appraisal comes in bad, like not where you thought it should, and you need help putting together an argument to get a higher value or to dispute it, talk to TJ. So I use a lot of what he says. And his quote to me is always, and he says it in his classes, square footage is square footage. How you use it is a personal preference. So he typically does not make adjustments for bedrooms and bathrooms. Because how easy would it be to knock down a wall and take out a bedroom? It's pretty easy. Some of you have done it. I know you have. Okay. So that's why when we're on the adjustment sheet, you're not going to see me making adjustments for beds and baths, but I put them on there as a data point. Okay. Central air. If we look at our adjustment, these all have central air. So we're not going to make an adjustment. But let's say that we didn't have, one of the units didn't have air conditioning, or it did. It's a $5,000 adjustment. If one had evap cooling instead of central air, it would be 2,500, they're worth 2,500. So if I played this out to help you guys, let's pretend that this one had no air conditioning and this one had evap, okay? We're just gonna play. <clears throat> My The subject unit has air conditioning and this one does not. So that would mean that my property, because it has central air, I want to bring the comp up to mirror my house. So I'm going to do a positive adjustment for the fact that that one that sold for 613 didn't have air conditioning. And if it would have, it should have been worth $5,000 more. Does that make sense? Okay, if this went the other way and this, the comp had central air and mine had none, then to bring the comp down to the value of mine, it would be a negative adjustment, right? Because comp one had central air and the subject doesn't. So therefore I need to adjust the fact that the subject property should be worth less because it doesn't have the central air. Okay, I'm seeing some heads bobbing, you got it? So as you're making adjustments, you're making them to say, how do I make the comp like the subject? Okay, for EVAP, central air is worth five and EVAP is worth 2,500. So the difference would be, a $2,500 adjustment if the comp has an EVAP cooler and the subject has central air. I'm using the difference. All good with me yet? All right, you guys are so smart. We're gonna get this done really fast. Okay, the tool automatically calculates this, the adjustment for year built so you don't have to do anything if you're using this spreadsheet. Now garages, this one has one sparking parking space and all the other ones have two. And we said on the adjustment tab that a parking space in a standard residential area is worth 10,000 a space, right? However, we believe that because of the location of these properties, 
those garage spaces are probably worth more. Did we agree to that? Yes. Okay. So we're going to make it 20,000 just because it sounds like a good round number. So this one has two and I have one. So is this a positive or negative adjustment? Positive. That true? Right. Do you all agree oh, with no. him? Negative. 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 Okay. <laughs> he came on so confident you all didn't argue with him. <laughs> we were on mute. <laughs> I know. You could take your mute off if it's quiet where you are. Easier to play that way. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we don't have a lot of these, which is quite fascinating to me. Oh, look, this is coming out exactly where I thought it would. Okay. So we have C3. We've said that all these comps are C2s. Okay. And we know that that's one level. So our adjustment per condition should somewhere between three and five. So do you want to do, do you think they're a bigger delta between the C2 and C3 or a smaller delta between the C2 and C3? Smaller. Okay, let's take a poll. Who thinks it's, it's the smaller? Give me a thumbs up. One, two. Who thinks it should be a greater adjustment? One. I was say 4%. Yeah. And Amy says, let's go right in the middle. Okay. <laughs> Margaret would have gone 5%. I would have gone to oh, the wow. max. Um, <laughs> but I I wouldn't argue that the going in the middle is wrong either, right? This is what is this? This is a art, not mm -hmm. a client. Right? Yeah. So if I have a C2 comp and I'm turning it and I'm adjusting for a c3 subject is it positive or negative 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 so this is where you have to know how to build formulas so equals a negative sold price times amy's four mm percent -hmm. it's a twenty four thousand dollar negative adjustment isn't that interesting how that comp worked oops Guess I should grab the right formula box. Okay. So we've got everything from 582 to 644, right? This is where you start adjusting for market conditions, right? We don't really know what the market conditions. I could go probably pull some data on condos in downtown Denver. Um, but this is where I would probably just apply my logic. Okay. Again, these are not the best comps because of the age. But you got the theory behind it, right? So if I look at this, the average, the this average sure is 19. And that one's still real. Sorry. Questions? No, I was just looking at the age of comp three compared to comp one and two. Right. And that right there, if you didn't know anything about the market, you could postulate that comp three, because it closed a year ago, the market was different. Uh huh. You're absolutely right. You could. And how do you prove that? So, see if I remember where to find it. <clears throat> Bear with me for a minute. So there's this document called the Inventory Tabular Stats 10,004 MC. This is actually a printout that appraisers will use to understand um, what's happening in a particular market area, okay? So they've changed this, so it's gonna be a little bit harder. It's not the one I wanted. <clears throat> Broken out into months. Mm -hmm. This isn't telling me what I wanted it to tell me. Oh, maybe it's this one. 
I know what it looks like. I just have to find it. Yeah. So there are all kinds of stats classes mm -hmm. that you can take from RE Colorado. But if you look at this one, it's right here, right? A year ago, the median price was six ninety four. Now it's six twenty seven. Wow, right? that's a ten percent decline in wow. the market value of the property. And it was really funny having that pulled. That's that's what I was going to use. So that's kind of scary. Again, I'm just using dirty math, but it's directionally correct, right? That so right if I know that, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. That puts you right about five eighty on that year old listing. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if I say this one, so if I did market appreciation, I'm going to say, okay, equals, this is where I got to get really good. I'm going to take my sold price times a negative 0.1, right? Yep. Then I'm going to divide that by 12 to get a monthly value, right? Oops. And then I'm going to take that times the number of months. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So six months. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. going to be a negative $32,000 adjustment. Wow. Right? This one, I can put the same formula in, and now I'm going to change it. And it's going to be, what, 14 months, 13 months, call it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we might be being a little bit aggressive based on where we thought we were. Um, and then this one's like, what, nine months? Yeah. So those are other ways that you can make those adjustments, especially if you have to go back in time and where you've had, where you've had major market changes. Right. So in outside of these condo market in downtown Denver, I still would say the market in Denver has been relatively flat. but we definitely saw a sign. So the 10% might be a little high, at least on some of the newer ones. But again, it's putting us right where we thought we should be. Isn't that magical? Yep. That was cool. All right, so what are your questions? So knowing these numbers, Margaret, would you tell your clients to offer 600 still? I probably, yeah, so I wouldn't put a whole lot of weight in this piece of it. I'm okay. still, so that's where if I'm working with a buyer, right, or even a seller, right? So if I'm doing a seller's consultation, I'm absolutely looking at all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, okay, if we look at this, our competition, right, this is us. The good news is we're the lowest price party in town. Right now, what I don't know, because I didn't spend the time to find out is, is there something about that building that makes that particular building worthless? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing you kind of have to start looking at when you're downtown is like um, HOA fees and stuff. Not necessarily the HOA fees, but what you may or may not know. So mm -hmm. I might know that um, Brooks Towers is looking at assessments for those people that own those of upwards of a hundred thousand dollars a unit because Brooks towers is so old and it needs so many updates with all the elevators and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that just teaching you today, I didn't take the time to look for. Right. Um, yeah. only want some stuff. Exactly. Right. It's different. So what I'd like to do, if you guys want to, is would you rather see me do one that's a house with a basement in suburbia do my dad. Sure. we got yes. time it's up to you i'd like to see it all right me too who's got an address let's do our house okay <laughs> let's do the crooks house have there been sales in your neighborhood yes a few Two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Stop. Okay, so give me your address. Three zero seven. Monaries. M O N A R E S. Huh? M O N A R E S. Right there on the top. Uh, 
All right, let me move all this around. All right. So let's grab that address. And you guys have a basement, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'm going to go back here to search residential. I'm going to put in their address. <clears throat> I'm going to get the hyperlink. I'm going to do my closed and I'm going to do single families. Okay. So these are all within a quarter mile of their property. I don't have a lot. I have some to work with, but not a lot. Um, and they're above ground. Square footage is 1946. So if I go to results. Okay. So I've got, these are all pretty much in that same. This will work. Okay. This one's in here twice. <laughs> as is this one because our Ari Colorado um, also shares data with Iris and PPAR sometimes you'll get duplicates so you just want to take those out um, and Iris makes it really hard with our price per square foot stuff but we'll figure it out so we have one pending 365 Bonanza um, you guys have a two story mm hmm Okay, so this is a two story, so that's a good comp. This is a two story, that's two story, that's two story. Wow, we got some good comps to play with. All right, so I'm just gonna grab this one. 189 Piney Creek. I gotta clean this all up or it's gonna confuse me. I'm gonna put the subject in first. I'm gonna go back to realist. Okay, and their above grade is 1946. Their total square footage is 2919. They still have our unfinished basement in there. You have 812 finished. Oh, they do have finished. Oh, so they must not have counted the storage as finished. And 161 unfinished. You probably don't have carpet in your storage room. That's probably it then. All right. And we've got four bedrooms and four I baths. That's some bath, right? And we have, do we have central air? Mm hmm Okay. And it was built in... 2003 how big is your garage because i'm lazy two two car and then i'm going to grab their lot size Ocean which stand. is 5176 and i'm going to ask them what their condition is on their property are you a c2 c3 c3 you're a c3 not fully updated no. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to grab one or two of these and play around for a little bit. So 189 Piney Creek sold 927.23. And it was listed for 740, closed for 730. All right, so their above grade square footage is 1998. 
total square footage is 2835. Their finished basement is 687. And their unfinished is 150. And they have 4-4. Four, four. There you go. Mm -hmm. They probably have central air. I'm going to assume it for right now. <clears throat> they were built in 2017, so much newer. Yeah. They have a two-car garage. And their lot size is... Five one one five. Oh, I need to take these out. <laughs> Sounds weird, doesn't it? What? Sorry, we've got. Sounds like dogs, but not really. Not at my house. Mine sleeping. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So this one looks pretty nice. Not my style, but what do we got, folks? Do we have a C2 or a C3? C2. C2. I agree. Okay. And we would put all of those other comps out there, but we're not going to do that because of time. Okay. So assuming we got to figure out what our median price per square foot is, right? This one's going to be pretty easy to do as well. Um, so we're going to go back here to our single line. And I'm going to have to go look in Iris. Oh, cancel. So the price per square foot total. See, they don't even do it for me. So I'm going to have to mathematically calculate it. So if I take 730 and divide it by 2835, what do I get? Need a calculator. Divided by 2835. So that one's 257. So that's pretty close to Piney Creek. And then 3622, oops, 730. Those are divided same. by 36.22 is 201. So if I go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so my median's right at that 250, right? Mm -hmm. So if we plug that 250 up no, here. <clears throat> now the calculator's going to do the rest. All right. So if the properties were the exact same, you're probably around 720, 715, somewhere in there. Okay. But you told me that yours is a C3 versus there being a C2. So are mm -hmm. you a 3% or a 5% Delta? Oh. Don't be the homeowners, be the How appraisers. I would say three. Okay. Three or four. Yeah, I'd say three or four. They're newer. Yeah. But you're being a homeowner and not. Oh, I would say oh, that one comes out at six ninety five, right? So if you had several of these, they're probably all going to be in about in that same realm. It isn't three percent less than five percent, like adjustment. Yes. So four percent is a greater adjustment. Oh, I got you. I was adjusting more. You were adjusting more, not less. Yeah. So you're saying ours is worse than theirs. It's just older. Yeah. It's an older neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. But that's where we would, I would guess us at anyways. Knowing so does that number feel right? That number feels right. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Woo! I love it when the numbers work. <laughs> I could go up or down a little bit on both on oh, that number. No, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if we and if we took the time to do more of them, yeah. Right. And we, we would yeah. have the range. Right. And this particular one that we that we picked is in a completely new subdivision that is more desirable than ours because of the amenities. But okay, so should I have picked another one of these? No, because that that one fits too. That's how the appraiser would pull it too. Bonanza was is in our neighborhood. 
Yeah, Bonanza one's in our neighborhood. All right, well, let's do this one. 138 Bonanza Drive. Does little Joe live there? That who? Sorry. Little Joe. Oh, no. Bonanza. Okay. I was just checking oh. the age of my people to see who I got it. Lala's like, wow. going, what are you talking I, about? I got you. I got you, Margaret. Wait, I don't know many neighbors. <laughs> you never watched Bonanza. So Bonanza, Lala, was a Western <laughs> sitcom show that was on when I was growing up. I mean, it was on like every Tuesday night and my daddy had to watch it like Everything, but if you go out like on me TV, you can still find Bonanza reruns. Yeah, and yeah. the guy who played Little Joe was also the dad in the show Little House on the Prairie. Michael, I don't remember his name, yeah, but I remember Michael being Lance. a teenage girl thinking he was the hottest guy next to David Cassidy oh. that you ever wanted to see, and so it was just a check to see. <laughs> where people are at his oh, daughter I'm gonna look up who this guy is so i can find out my yes. childhood <laughs> <laughs> his daughter ironically is on yellowstone oh really michael landon's yeah. daughter yeah michael landon's oh. daughter's um the oh, girl yeah. hand yeah. she plays the girl hand on yellowstone oh very cool yeah we're gonna watch this recording and go i thought this was a class about cmas <laughs> not about <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Margaret's older than dirt and remembers yeah. all these little no. shows. Margaret, I, I'm with you. I remember all that as well. Yeah. Hey, those are we happy never, memories I, with those kinds of shows. Yeah. I remember it. We just never watched it when I was a kid. Yeah. 1182. Now, this one's probably stretching the parameters that I would use on square footage. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but model. for yeah. the exercise it's fine mm -hmm. um five four there's a few different models in the neighborhood that one's bigger yeah like i said if i had if i was really doing it this one may have gotten thrown out but it's also just it's fun to see where the numbers come in right because mm -hmm. if you do your adjustments right and they make sense they're probably getting you pretty close Sixty-four eighty-two. She wants you to do a CMA on ours because she found a house she likes. They're lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. All right. So let's look at this one. I'm I'm semi joking. Hate those cabinets. <laughs> that honey oak stuff in me just I'm not a fan. Yeah, I'm not either. And all my family in the Midwest thinks those honey oak cabinets are just the next best thing to slice mm -hmm. bread. And I'm like going, not on the house I'm building back there. There ain't going to be no honey oak cabinets. Mm -mm. All right. So what is this one, guys? Two or three? three. I think it's definitely better. C three. I think it's three. Well, does the cat make it worth more? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because they still have carpet. It's like the same realm as ours. I don't think it's wildly better. It's slightly better. Well, no, no, no. I didn't ask you if it was better than yours. I asked you no. if it was a C two or a C three. Oh, fair. Yeah, C three. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, all things being equal, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that brought that down to six thirty nine. Oh wow. Right. But again, I don't even know if it's a fair comp because there's such a big delta. You know, you got 500 mm -hmm. square feet difference in size. So I probably normally wouldn't use it. We'll would kick it out. I yeah. would have kicked yeah. it out. Right. It's much bigger. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I would have. And I adjusted for it, but I may not have adjusted enough. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I look at square footage, I would have used this one and this one. I probably wouldn't have used those two. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now made it look easy, didn't I? The way you get good at it is practice. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're all participating in March Madness, right? Yes. What is oh, a way 
to go get points towards March Madness that you all of this? you can do yet today to help your teams. View houses. Yes, go preview mm -hmm. houses, right? Go preview some houses, or if you went with Taylor yesterday and previewed houses yesterday, go <laughs> do a CMA on one of the houses you preview, right? I used to do this when I was learning Applewood. I used to farm Applewood. I did for probably about seven years, and then I got busy coaching and gave up on it. But I would go preview every single house in Applewood, <laughs> and I would take my showing doc, my showing paperwork that I filled out with the listing on it, and I would write down what I think the house is worth. And then every once in a while, a couple months later, I'd go pull that folder, and I'd go look up and see what they actually did sell for to see how close I got, right? So yeah. what would your world look like if you did a CMA a week? Mm -hmm. What would your world look like if you did a CMA a day? The reality is you guys, they don't take long, right? Once you get the rhythm of them, it doesn't take long. Like I can fire up with that spreadsheet. And I think, I think Patty, I think you've been using my spreadsheet when we were working on some earlier. Yeah. Once you understand how the spreadsheet works, it gets really easy because it does the hard math for you. Did right? You ever use that? Okay, I had two questions. Lala, go first. Uh, do we get a copy of the spreadsheet? You sure will. That's why I took a picture of who was here. So you get the adjustment sheet and you get the spreadsheet. Thanks. And I actually have the spreadsheet locked so you can't break some of the formulas and then tell me it doesn't work. Because <laughs> I've tough. never had that happen before. <laughs> okay. Now, if you're going to do a CMA that you're going to take, you're going to make that follow-up appointment with that seller. There are tools that you can use to make them. Okay. And... They're all right here. So let's just do this. So if I go back to actions, I can create, so a cloud CMA, that's a service that you pay extra for. Um, we don't use it in our business because we don't just, we don't do enough lists, do enough business on our sales side to justify the expense. It's pretty cool and it's pretty sexy. I know Lantern Home Group uses it. I know AN Homes use it. I think Gil Orchard does. But I just use this old fashioned one, right? What? Contact name, it's gonna be me cause I'm a, a good name, right? And you just start filling it out, right? You go into what pages do you want? Spend some time playing with this. Like they've got so many options. There's actually a video of how to do this. But you could bring a million pages over. I keep it simple. Then I could put in my subject information, right? I could go put in, I could enter the, well, I could go to Realist and I could look up Amy's property address, 307. Oh, 307. What county are you, Weld or Boulder? Weld. Because I know Erie changes depending on where you are. Okay, here we are. So I want that property, so it's gonna automatically fill it in. Go, then I got a cover page, not going very fast. Then it will bring over the comparables. I don't know why it's freezing. Maybe I'm getting click happy, there we go. Okay, so then I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna keep all of these just because for today it's easy. Then it's going to take me, put me on the map, show me where all the properties are in relationship to the subject. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in my adjustment. So if I've used my spreadsheet, it gets really easy to put in the adjustments, right? I like to use detail mode because that's the way my brain works. So if I'm adjusting 365 Bonanza, I go back to the spreadsheet and I would just start putting in information. Pluses, minuses, right? Like I go... 
25,000 minus 750 or whatever it is, right? Like I just start typing. And then once you hit finish, you get an actual CMA. Oh, I'm deleting that one. Um, but you can actually get a full blown CMA that you can take out to your client. That will look like this. And it's free, like this is free, it does its job. And again, you can you can upload a picture of the property if you have one or another great way to get pictures is off of Google Maps. But here's the summary of all of the comps that we use to come up with that list price at the time. And then here's the detailed adjustments that I made. Right, and then it shows the client everything they need to know. And then from this, we determined the price and we sold the house for $415,000. So that's, I mean, this is what we use. Super simple. We don't get super fancy. That's not who I am, right? Um, but it does what it needs to do. And by the way, this form works so good with those dang engineer brains. My friend, Matt, every time we sold one of his houses, he goes, are you bringing me one of those documents? <laughs> and his wife, who is the creative, goes, just tell me what the number is. Like, she doesn't care, right? But <laughs> it's a tool when you understand the type of clientele you're working with, right? If you brought that to my house, being the high D that I am, I think you all know I'm pretty high D. I just go, 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 right? I'm just going to go, okay, what's the number, Right? where Amy and Corey are gonna go through every single adjustment and call me and ask me why I didn't put a $10,000 adjustment on this one. Probably true. Yep. It is true, you're just like Matt, I know that, <laughs> right? And so knowing the people that you're working with is very helpful as to what you need to take with you. I have some clients, even on listings, I take that quick CMA out and they're done, they're happy, right? Other people want to see the details. Okay. All right. Questions? Thoughts? So I watched a, a thing on RE Colorado. They had a training one. And um, I remember they had, I think it was on the tax tab. You could scroll down and they had a, an approximation. It was like just one you know data point, to, like a Zillow almost. Mm -hmm. And then realist had one as well. And like just to kind of double check yourself after you've kind of done all the legwork that you did. Yeah. I mean, I use all of those things, right? I yeah. look at what did the tax assessors determine the house was worth as of June 30th, 2022, mm -hmm. because those of us that did ton of CMAs for tax reviews know that overall, most of the counties got it pretty close. Right. Mm -hmm. The data point. Then there's a thing in Realist called the AVM. It's a data point. It's an algorithm. Yep, that's the one, AVM. Yep. Zillow is an algorithm. I always pull Zillow because I want to know what they've already looked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. can see that. Right? But it doesn't mean that any of them are accurate, right? They're nothing more than data, right? And as Jeff teaches us in his listing consultation, right, in our current market, it's as much important to know what the competition is doing versus what the solds were. Mm -hmm. Right. I was working with an agent the other day on a listing that that's not moving. And I said, it's not moving because you don't have the best value. You might have the prettiest house, but people aren't seeing the value in your pretty. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do a very non-emotional, right? Look at what was the competition and we went back and looked at what houses sold that were comparable to theirs at the same time while they were on the market yeah and said this is what the these buyers may have come seen your house but they didn't make an offer on yours mm -hmm. right so pricing is pricing it changes depending on what you're doing when i first started that excel spreadsheet was probably the gospel Right. In 2015, 2016, that thing was pretty gospel. 2022, you just threw it out the window. Like it was like throwing spaghetti on the wall. Right. And so it's an it takes an art. And the more you know your markets, the easier it will become. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Sweet. All right. Well, I'm going to end the CMA part of this class. <laughs>